What's happening fam? John here from AF Anime. We are back with another One Piece chapter review, this time for chapter 1048, which is titled 20 Years. And I suppose that chapter title is appropriate since we do have a flashback within this chapter that goes back 20 years to the death of Odin. But we'll talk about that here in a little bit. For now, I want to touch base with the cover page, which is continuing the German storyline. And it shows Brule speaking to Cracker. Apparently, she's snitching on the fact that Reju and Ichiji have shown up to Chocolate Town. And the quote or thought bubble that's above Cracker is apparently just a stylized exclamation point. So that does answer the question I had in a previous chapter cover story where Charlotte Brownie had a similar yet odd symbol in his thought bubble. And I assumed it was a stylish exclamation point, And it looks like that is is the case. So with that being said, there really isn't a whole lot to unpack in regards to this cover page. However, if Cracker were to get involved in another fight, especially with the two remaining Vin Smoke, then that might serve to be an entertaining cover story, or at least something we can look forward to in a week to week basis. So with that out of the way, we can go ahead and get on with chapter 1048. And it looks like Momonosuke is finally getting off his ass and trying to actually accomplish something. And I'll be honest here, I know that myself and majority of the One Piece fan base has been kind of tired of seeing the same old routine of him him being apprehensive about his own capabilities and saying up and down I can't do this I can't do this it's been long enough and push is come to shove so I guess it's good now that he's actually you know shutting his mouth and actually attempting to move Onigashima now from the contents of this chapter he does seem motivated but we aren't 100% sure on whether or not he's succeeding in moving it in any way but hopefully we'll get a resolution to that situation within the next couple chapters or so the next thing I want to talk about is Kaido's flame dragon torch it's a dope looking technique and some amazing artwork in terms of what we got to see but it just raises the question like how broken is this fruit and why is it called the fish fish fruit now i know a lot of people probably asked that question since we got the official reveal for the name of kaido's fruit but in today's chapter him setting himself on fire i mean i suppose it could be some aspect or quality to a mythical zone fruit but it just raises a lot of question as to what oda exactly is trying to portray here is he just wanting you know kaido to be overpowered is this some magical aspect to dragons you know being able to manipulate air wind sky all that stuff it's just very interesting and i'd love to get some answers on it moving on though from one move to another i guess it's time to talk about luffy's new move the gomo gomo no bajeron gun and I did a little bit of research and it turns out that the name Bajrang is an alternative name for the Hindu god Hanuman. Now, when it comes to this Hindu deity, it turns out there are a multitude of alternative names, but Bajrang is one of the first ones to pop up and it basically translates to strong one as this deity Hanuman is essentially associated with strength, with heroism, and even is affiliated with people avoiding persecution. Now, ultimately, the people of Wano aren't really being persecuted. They are pretty much being subjugated and dominated. So I wouldn't say that this deity is linked to the sun god Nika. However, another deity that he might be linked to is Sun Wukong, the monkey king from the journey to the west. Now, this would be because the deity Hanuman is known as the divine monkey. And a lot of people believe that he may have been the source of inspiration when it comes to Sun Wukong, the monkey king from a journey to the west. Now, that ultimately is just something interesting to talk about. But Another thing that is worth mentioning when it comes to this deity is this deity's father. So this deity is acknowledged as having a spiritual father by the name of Vayu, who is the god or the deity of air, breath, and wind. Now, narrowly, this doesn't mean too much in terms of the grand One Piece story, but a lot of people do actually associate Luffy's father, Dragon, with maybe having a devil fruit or some kind of ability to control the wind or to utilize air in some way, shape, or form. And this could be a cool way of Oda foreshadowing if Dragon, in fact, does have some wind-based fruit or possibly even a mythical Zoan god type when it comes to Vayu, Hindu deity of the air and wind. Now, that could just be utterly unimportant to the world of One Piece. I just thought it was kind of a cool, interesting nod to what we saw with Dragon all the way back in Logetown. In any case, the last thing I want to talk about in terms of this attack is its naming conventions, as it kind of just seems like Kong Gun or moves that we've seen already, but I guess the Bajrong name is kind of an allusion to how strong the attack is, as it is like Kong Gun, but it is incorporating advanced armament hockey and advanced conquerors. Now, another topic of the chapter that's worth talking about is Usopp's role in it. A lot of people are still kind of waiting for Usopp to get his big moment when it comes to Wano, and it looks like he might be dropping the ball again 
as he can't even keep Kinemon and Okiku safe. It looks like they are floating off into the distance as he holds on for dear life. Now, narrowly, I would say that this probably can't lead anywhere, and it's still possible and likely that Usopp will get some kind of moment to shine before Wano's out, but it does kind of raise some questions for me, because aside from Denjiro in this chapter, we really don't know where a whole lot of the scabbards are, what they're doing, or what their status even is. So I suppose it's possible that Kinemon and Okiku are basically floating off into the distance, maybe to end up at a certain place for a certain moment in time. And the next thing I want to talk about, or maybe even complain about, is the six plus page flashback that we got, giving us recaps of everything that we already knew. Now it's cool seeing the daimyo all getting, you know, their time to shine on a page, and Ushimaru, who some people suspect maybe Zoro's father or grandfather or something to that effect. It's nice to see those characters, but ultimately, all the stuff we went over in these six pages of flashback, we already knew. Now, if it's just a writing tactic to get us to dislike the villains of this series, or of this arc at least, even more, that's perfectly fine, because there are some parallels between Kaido and Orochi in this chapter that might indicate something more important that I'll touch on here in a bit. But ultimately, after being on a break and then seeing six pages of something that we already knew, it just, it wasn't very satisfactory and it just kind of seemed like page filler to a chapter that was already fairly uneventful. So that's just a personal gripe on my part. Unless it's Kaido's backstory, I don't think there is a whole lot of flashbacks that we actually need to see unless it leads to something important or some important revelation. And it's possible that these six pages could be, you know, tying into a broken up flashback over the next handful of chapters, but honestly, it just felt like a waste of time to me and that felt a small need to complain about it. All right, so I guess the next thing to talk about is going to be the situation with Orochi and Denjiro and Hiyori. And a lot of people are probably going to complain that Denjiro was the one to behead Orochi if in fact Orochi is dead, but then again this is One Piece. But actually after thinking about it, I think that this might actually be the most appropriate way for him to meet his end. I personally would have preferred Hiyori to do it, but this is kind of poetic in the sense that when we were introduced to Orochi and Hiroshiro as we knew him then, it was actually in the context that Kirishiro was cutting down Hiyori for the sake of Orochi. And then if Orochi's demise or his death comes in the exact opposite manner, then I guess we can see that as kind of being poetic and maybe Hiyori doesn't have to deliver that final blow herself. But I will say though, if that is how this is going to go down with Orochi finally being taken out by Denjiro, then I guess Oda may have missed an opportunity here to give Hiyori a kind of badass moment of her own in terms of taking out one of the big bads of Wano as she promised she wanted to do. Now the last point of topic that I want to talk about in terms of this chapter is how this chapter kind of indicates that things are really, really gearing toward the end of the situation in Wano, or at the very least the conflict between Orochi, Kaido, and their enemies. And the reason I say this is because of something I said in a lot of previous chapters when these lanterns for the Fire Festival popped up, I kind of just assumed that they would be present in the sky as Wano's events were concluded or as Luffy defeated Kaido. And it appears that that does seem to be the case. If Orochi truly is cut down on the same page that we see a lantern wishing that Orochi was essentially killed, then that would be the poetic end I was expecting when we first saw those lanterns. But more importantly, there is another theme in this chapter that kind of makes me think that we are actually gearing toward the end of this conflict within the next couple chapters possibly. And that would be the fact that Orochi and Kaido both are dragons on fire during this chapter. Now, like I said, we can't really presume that Orochi is dead, but we gotta say at least he's been embarrassed, and Kaido might be in line to be in the exact same situation. He is a dragon, just like Orochi is, and he's on fire, like Orochi was for this chapter. And we never saw the conclusion, at least in this chapter, for the bout that we got with Luffy and Kaido. Now, don't get me wrong, as much as I can't wait to see the end of Wano or to see what comes of everything and how the story progresses, if Kaido were to be KO'd, knocked out, or killed in the next chapter because of this Bajrong attack, I really just wouldn't be super satisfied with it. There still needs to be something more, I feel, to make the story feel as important as you know Oda played it out to be before we even got to Wano. I mean, I suppose it's possible he's just stretching out this final attack if this is the final attack. That way, Momo 
Momonosuke can get his moment to shine as he moves Onigashima out of the way. I mean, to be honest, both of these points really just seem like death signals or end signals, but I do think that Oda is going to tweak things as narrowly as possible as we move into each chapter, so that way he can feel that the ending is satisfactory. In any case, that's going to do it for my thoughts on the chapter's events. I will give this chapter like a 7 out of 10. It wasn't you know, super entertaining. We had some cool moments, some amazing artwork. It's just the pacing felt very weird, and I was just incredibly unsatisfied with the flashback that we got eating up most of the chapter. So, you guys, with that being said, that is going to do it for my review for chapter 1048 of One Piece. Now, if you guys have been following this channel for a little bit, you realize that this chapter review is a great deal different when it comes to my previous chapter reviews, where I typically do the recap of the chapter's events, a rating, a general review, and then some discussion this video was pretty much all discussion as I just wanted to cut out the recap because some people have pretty good memories and don't really need a recap anyway so if you guys enjoyed this new format of you know chapter reviews let me know in the comment section down below and I will certainly keep it up it gives a little more conversation rather than you know me mindlessly telling you what occurred in the last chapter so once again thank you guys very much for watching the video if you made it this far I really appreciate that if you guys enjoyed this and want to see more of it please be sure to like share and subscribe it would help me out greatly once again my name is John from AFA and I'll catch you guys in the next video